Hi folks, my name is Girish Bally, the host for Back to Basics, another Back to Basics for another week. Today we're going to talk to you about tech. Yes, that's right, tech. There is a lot of problems when it comes to tech in the landscaping world, in the gardening world, in the tree world. Basically what I'm trying to say is in the nature. And how do we resolve that? What do we do? Or what do we not do? Do we call someone or do you do some DIYs when it comes to tick fixing? And we'll get into the termination part of things. And, and that's where this guest came in. So let's bring in Brian to the, to the call. And then we'll talk about the details of tick. So how are you, sir? And thanks for coming to uh, Back to Basics. I'm doing just fine here today, and uh, even though it's winter time, yeah. it's uh, definitely no tick season for me. But uh, hey, I'm glad to be here, and uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Before we get into the t uh, tick business and the tick termination and terminating, uh, what does back to basic mean to you? Yeah, I, I'm I'm ready for that. I, I uh, <laughs> and actually when I when you saw that back to basics, it actually reminded me of a song that I really enjoyed back in the '90s. Uh, it was actually uh, uh, written by a, a Christian group, and it called it's called Back to the Basics for Life. So I'm going to read the the chorus that I really liked on it. Awesome. Uh, and here's how it goes. It is written by For Him was the name of the group. Uh, it goes like this. Just a couple of verses, a couple of things here. They said we need to get back to the basics of life. A heart that is pure, a love that is blind, a faith that is fervently grounded in Christ, the hope that endures for all times. These are the basics. We need to get back to the basics of life. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. It seems like I need to listen to that song or, or read that uh, lyrics again. So thank you again for reminding me that. Uh, it's a good one. No problem. It's a good one. Thank you. Thank you again, Brian. Yep. So, so before we get into the tick business what what makes you tick and why did you why did you get into this tick business well i tell people you got to be a little half crazy and a little weird and have a strange fascination with ticks which i have yeah. since i've been a little kid yeah uh, i remember uh way back when i was a, a young kid i lived in michigan all my life and uh i was born in the upper part of michigan but my formative years, let's say K through eighth grade and even high school, I lived uh, downstate Michigan. Yeah. And we would visit my grandparents who lived, you know, what they call the Upper Peninsula. And they had ticks up there. And I remember as a little boy, like five, six years old, uh, we would play in the woods because they lived in a beautiful spot in the woods. And at night uh, we would come in and just before bed, mom, we would come in and mom would do a tick check. You know, a little four or five, six years old. We'd strip down to nothing but a smile. Mama would check us all over and she'd pull off these little ticks. And to me, it was, it was, it was kind of fascinating, you know, because uh, a mosquito, you can feel it when they bite you. Right? That's right. But ticks, you can't really, because they're very secretive and stealthy, you know? Yeah. And uh, uh, she would pull them off and we never, ever had a problem with them. Never. That was back in the 60s, you know, when I was a kid. So uh, Fast forward another couple of years, you know, I introduced my wife to him when we got married and then, then our kids to him. And we, when we moved up here, uh, we live in northern Michigan now. So uh, but I've always had a little weird interest. About 10 years ago, I started really digging into how I could keep them away from people and ourselves. And that's kind of how what really kicked things off. It was kind of rebirth, you know, after all those years of uh, avoiding them. And, uh, and then, then I started to learn more about them. And so, you know, it's taken me a while to learn all that I've learned. I've spent hundreds of hours, you know, just uh, researching them and finding out all kinds of crazy things about them and how to keep them off us and stuff like that. So we don't get Lyme disease or any tick-borne diseases. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you again, Brian, for explaining that, uh, you know, as to how did you get into the, the tick side of things. Uh, so yeah. thank you again for that. So. Is it really that serious when it comes to tick? I mean, and and how bad is it? I mean, uh, do we do we what do we do to prevent it? Let Let's start from there, Brian. Well, the, the, I just wrote a a, a a press release here recently about the the, the five uh, different things you can do to keep ticks off you. You know, and 
And uh, the, the fifth one is probably the most important thing. And uh, that is uh, permethrin, okay? Because you can, you can tuck your pants in, uh, tuck your pants in your socks. You can wear light colored clothing. You know, you can spray some DEET on your skin and stuff like that. And you can try to avoid, you know, where they're at by staying on a, on a, on a, on a narrow path, you know, the straight and narrow, so to speak. And because they're only on vegetation, they are only on grass and low lying brush. They don't fall out of trees. They don't jump. They don't fly. Uh, they are opportunists, if you want to call it. They're sitting on a blade of grass, so to speak. And they just wait for some unsuspecting soul. You know, it could be us. It could be some little animal. And they just jump on. They don't even ask permission, nothing. They just get on. And they, then while they're on, they start looking around for a place to have a, a, a meal. Hmm. So uh, uh, I've always said one of the best ways to never have ticks is never go out of your house. But we can't live that way. Of course. So I really enjoy, I, I bumped into this product after doing research. It's called Permithrin. And uh, it's, it's, it is the best practice you can possibly use to keep ticks away and keep them off of you. Hmm. And I want to explain a little bit the difference because we all know DEET, which is a wonderful product, all right? And DEET, we can spray it on our skin. It's, it's great for, uh, for keeping mosquitoes and stuff and, and even ticks off to, you, to a certain extent. Created in 1945 for our military. Uh, and, and it's wonderful. Uh, but you have to spray it on every day and sometimes a couple times a day. With sure. permethrin, it, it, it's very different because permethrin, you actually spray on your clothes. You know, your shoes, socks, pants, and shirts and stuff like that, and any kind of gear, outdoor gear, tents, you know, backpacks, whatever. And, and what it does, permethrin, it, it sticks to the fabric, all right? And one of the cool things about it is that it's, it has lasting power, hmm. where permethrin will last literally for several weeks, several washings, and still remain effective. You don't have to put on every day, hmm. as opposed to DEET. Where you know DEET you put on every you know every day, and it eventually wears off. And DEET the way DEET works is the scent, the aroma, the smell of it. When a mosquito comes in contact with you, you know, or close to you, they sense that with their little antennas, and they say, "Hey, there's no blood there," so they fly yeah. off. And you say, "Yeah, yeah. right, I, I won," you know. But with so, with permethrin, it's different because when permethrin dries on your clothes, you can use it wet too, but it's best to use it dry. After it dries on you for a couple hours. So know, Brian, spray. Go ahead. No, 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 please go ahead. Please. Okay, so you spray your clothes, let's say the night before. Uh, let's say maybe you're going to go to the nature, wherever you're going to go outdoors, and it's dry, dries easily overnight. But when it dries, it's odorless. There's no smell to it, no scent to it, nothing. Yeah. So no insects can smell it. However, they don't notice it until they come in contact with it. They call it a contact repellent. So that means, let's say a little tick starts crawling on your pants, and, uh, they're they're gonna really notice this this uh this I mean it feels like an electric grid to them it drives sure. them nuts so literally they they start let's say on your on your shins and they're crawling up your legs and you don't even notice them half the time but every step they take is driving them crazy and if they're on you for they say for about a minute or longer mm. it will eventually do them in it'll eventually kill them yeah so yeah it not yeah. only repels them but it'll actually kill them eventually too and that's the cool thing about it. We, it's, it's harmless for us. You know, you mm. don't use it on your skin because your skin just dissipates it after about 15, 20 minutes. So it's useless for skin, but it's great for any kind of peril like that. And yeah. uh, I've actually watched a tick fall off of me before mm. because they crawl on it, you know, up to my up, up, up to my uh, belt line. And, and then, man, that's enough of that. You know, and then they probably die. Mm. I also saw a black fly one time land on my thigh, you know, of some genes that were treated, of course. And it was, to me, it was like entertainment. It was hilarious to watch this black fly. It looks like it was dancing, like it had hot feet. They call it the hot feet syndrome. High stepping because it couldn't, it says, what the heck did I land on here? And yeah, it, yeah. You know, and so, it eventually flew off. And I say, cha-ching, you know, I won because it invited me, you know. So permission yeah. is the coolest stuff that you can use out there. So, so Brian, uh, th thank you again for, for that. Let me let me ask you this. We We have... Um, all these seasons, we have four seasons, correct? Yep. And out of those four seasons, I think the major ones are the spring and the summer. Am I right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Spring so, for sure. Okay. So let so let's start from the basics, if you don't mind. So <laughs> when yep. when do we start to prepare ourselves for not getting 
uh, tick or even Lyme. So explain that to me. Well, it kind of depends on where you live. I live in the north where we have like over a foot of snow on the ground right now, okay? So we're safe right now. But you got to understand that ticks can come and go in temperatures around 32 to 40 degrees. So in the south, I mean, uh, there's areas where you have them pretty much year round, okay? But we'll take it the north, for example, right now. And, uh, uh, or let's, let's say to your question there, let's, let's say, uh, when do you start preparing for them? Is, is a, well, in the spring, when temperatures get in, in the 30s and 40s, that's when they're going to start coming out. Hmm. Because ticks will kind of hibernate to a certain extent in the wintertime, or they're, they're, they just kind of take a break in the wintertime. And then in the springtime, they come out with a vengeance. And they are it's like a bear coming out of hibernation sometimes, especially around here, hmm. where they're going to be out looking for food. And our ticks up here uh, usually eat just uh, normally. They they oh, they only eat one time a year. That's it. They so then, usually feast on something for two three days. So Brian, what what is okay from a uh, a regular citizen, a lame person who doesn't know nothing about tick uh, at all? What is the first symptom that they should be looking at? Like, does it eat the grass? Does it eat the pavers? Does it come out of the pavers? What what are we looking for? No, nope. ticks have one uh, menu. That's it, and that's blood. That's all they eat. Okay. And whether from some a mammal animal or from us, but that is it. Uh, okay. Nothing else. Okay. Nothing else. That's all they eat is blood. Okay, so which means that we we need to make sure that we are fenced in. We're making sure that the everything is all covered, and there's no animals inside the backyard or front yard. That's just how it is. That can help uh, in your yard, uh, keeping your grass short. Uh, any, they, they, they like to have, uh, ticks need moisture to survive, okay? You're not going to see them on the middle of a, a pavement parking lot. Right. Uh, that, that would kill them. It's just too hot for them. You know? Right. Uh, they need the, the moisture of uh, vegetation, you know, like low-lying brush, uh, grass, stuff like that. So if you have high grass in your yard, uh, you want to mow that down leaf litter like leaves piling around uh, uh wood piles for example they're going to like that there too that gives them cover that gives them moisture uh if you have a swing set for kids uh it's preferred to put that in a sunny area because there's gonna be less ticks there if you have a lot of animals coming and going from your in your yard uh you know wildlife uh, you have a chance of having more ticks then too uh but they're encroaching more and more on our on our living space because we're going into their living space actually you sure know? sure so basically you're saying is that we need our front yard and backyard and side uh, around the house basically to be clean otherwise yeah. you're gonna have a whole bunch of that yeah. so that's one thing so second is when these um let's say lawn doctors type of people okay they they want to go and treat your grass and and make sure there's no mosquitoes and there's no whatever insects or whatever, right? So, do we make sure that those are kind of maintained, uh, making sure that everything is killed? Because otherwise, that's not a bad. That's not a bad idea. That is not what I do, of course. I only work with humans. I understand that. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make that clear there too. But yeah, yeah. Uh, that helps. I mean, uh, I spray my mom's yard. She lives in the country. I live in well. Uh, a city type of area, I guess. I'm very rural anyways, where we live. Uh, but I, well, a lot of times we'll spray her yards around the edges, you know, around the vegetation, not as much in the grass because I cut her grass because she's she's up there in age. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, uh, keeping it, like you said, m keeping it manicured uh, as, as best you can will, will help lessen the problem. And if somebody did spray uh the spray is going to help and also yeah so idea. so now now when we get the tick inside the house how do we fix that issue it depends on how it comes in the house all right okay okay uh a lot of times pets will bring them in the house and uh if they come in the house uh my parents used to pick the ticks off their dog every night hmm. uh their record was 163 one day uh, that's a lot of ticks uh, but if they come in the house, let's say you're outdoors and, uh, you knew you went through some tick area. All right. 
and your clothes were not treated, let's say, for example, uh, and you think, okay, I saw one tick on my pants. Well, if you saw one, there's chance are there's another one, a couple more that maybe you didn't see. What mm. you do with those clothes when you come in the house is you actually put them in the dryer on high for about 10 to 15 minutes. That dry heat will kill them. Mm. Then you can put them in a washer. You put them in the dryer first. Kind of backwards, but that's how it works because they don't like dry heat like that, and that'll kill them. That's yeah, kind yeah, of that's... a little free advice here. Everything yeah. I'm talking about, pretty much, I have on my website. Even the the, the lawn just lawn care and stuff like that. Some ideas. So that would so, be on there too. So let me let me ask you this: for for the dogs, uh, obviously there are some tick medicines and Lyme medicines and live uh, you know injections and all. Is that yep. good, or do we do some other things even on top of that? Well, th there's a lot of good things out there for dogs uh, and, and pets like that. Uh, so I tell people, if you really want to know, talk to your veterinarian. Uh, but our, our stuff is not really for animals. Uh, you can if you want. A few people do. But there's so many other good things out there that I, I don't, you know, encourage it at all for. I mean, although it's not going to hurt them. You never want to put them on cats. It's only be for dogs. That would be the yeah. case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, a lot of good stuff already out there for dogs. So, uh, Brian, uh, thank you so much for giving all that information, whatever this is. And, uh, you know, it's, it seems like the season is definitely coming soon uh, around the world, where, wherever uh, spring is. Uh, but just one last question, if you don't mind. Is summer also another uh, season which is uh, easy to get ticks or the mainly is only in spring? Is because they are hibernating and coming out of there? Well, it's pretty much from almost March to November in the U.S. Okay. In, in most cases. So that's a long time. Uh, in the spring, they come out because they're, they're hungry. And sometimes may, they may not get their meal. Uh, they may not have been fortunate enough to get their meal uh, until maybe the fall. And sometimes the fall, just before winter, they're out in a vengeance again because yeah. they're uh, looking to try to get that last meal uh, for that season before they – before let's say snow falls and they go down dive under the leaf litter and then snow insulates them. It's a wonderful insulator. So then they're done now, done there for the winter. Yeah, so, yeah. But so, the, no, no, go ahead, please. Say, the, the, the life cycle of a tick. Uh, it, we're kind of talking uh, where I should probably mention that. I'll give you the the brief the brief life cycle. Uh, a female tick gives birth to about a thousand to five thousand eggs at a time. Well, it takes mm. her a few days to do that, mm. and that's in the summertime. After a couple of weeks, they break out of that egg and then they're looking for their first host. And they're just a microscopic little speck and they're right on the ground. So mm. their first host is typically a white footed mouse in the north, or maybe it's a skink, which is a, like a little lizard type of thing in the south. So they jump on that, they start sucking the blood out of it. And uh, the germs and the pathogens from that host is what gives them any Lyme or any tick borne disease like Babesiosis, or Leakiosis, Tularemia, Rocky Mountain Spot of Fever, whatever. So mm. they get it from their host. They're not born with any tick-borne diseases. Yeah. So after a couple of days, they drop off. They do whatever ticks do, which ain't a whole lot. You know, it's pretty boring life. Yes, yes. Uh, and that first fall and winter, they, they molt into the next series. Uh, they're going to grow uh, two more legs. Then the next spring, they come out. They're, they're classified as a rat. So they're actually part of the spider family uh, because they have eight legs. So they come out the next spring as a... Uh, uh, size of a poppy seed it's called a nip tick at that point yeah and uh if they got any kind of tick-borne disease the summer before uh they're going to come out the next spring they're going to have it for the rest of their life and even though they're the size of a poppy seed and uh they're just as lethal as an adult at that point. yeah yeah so so that size they could be on your shoelaces on your shoes your socks you can't even hardly see them that's why mm. it's so important to protect yourself from them sure sure so, yeah then they could get on their host that, that summer or the spring and summer or whenever they do, uh, suck the blood for a couple of days, get off, the molt in the next series that fall and that winter. Next spring they come out as adult. Uh, that, that summer they get on the, maybe us or, or a lot of times a, a deer. Uh, they get on the deer. They, they feed on the deer. Then they mate. The, at that point, they're, they're adults. Uh, they mate. Then the next spring, uh, the, the male gets off. He dies. They, they ride the deer the whole winter. Hmm. Uh, and then next spring, the female gets off, and she gives birth to a thousand to five thousand ticks. And man, that's enough to kill anybody. So she dies then too. Yeah. So the life cycle is about three years. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Brian, Brian, thank you again for explaining this. Uh, it seems like <laughs> it, it is a crazy topic that we're talking about, but it looks like it's a needed topic. And yeah. and there are a few questions that people are asking that what is the difference between tick and lime? And I guess we've discussed that a little and we have yeah. find out as to what we need to do before the the summer and right after winter and during the springtime. And what do we need to do to maintain our house? And it looks like we need some education on that and understanding on that. So that's why I have this show today and I thought I'll bring you in there. So thank you again for explaining all the stuff that you do. And uh, Brian, thank you again for coming here. But before you leave, do you have any last words or any? Uh, and how was your journey on Back to Basics, too, on top of that? Oh, it's been fun here. I mean, uh, I really enjoy this. I mean, uh, Lyme disease is probably the worst thing you can get from ticks. You can get other things, too, where you could get this called alpha gal syndrome, yeah. uh, where you would be allergic to red meat for the rest of your life. Uh, which is no fun at all. That's mostly yeah. in the southeastern part of the country. But uh, the best way to prepare for it, if somebody goes outdoors, I mean, if they're an outdoor worker, if they're a hunter, a, a backpacker, hiker, uh, gardening, uh, all kinds of different things, they need to treat their clothes with permethrin. And, and permethrin can last for weeks and months at a time. I mean, that's what I work with on my, on my website. It, it, it's a, a very unique one where the person who uses it are the ones that decide how long it's going to last. They can last for a month or two months or three months or even up to six months, depending on how they mix it. Yeah, so it's, yeah. a, it's a wonderful, that's what I use myself for sure. And I work yeah. with a lot of companies on that there too. So I have a poem when you're ready. I'll, I'll end with a poem. Yeah, go ahead. You ready for me to end with that? Okay. Sure. So like yeah, that. go for it. Go for it. I hate them little suckers. I want to terminate them all. So I do with permethrin. And love to watch them fall. From head to toe, I spray this stuff. My shoe, socks, clothes, and hats. Because it works on more than ticks. Like skeeters, chiggers, and even gnats. <laughs> so I ask you if you're listening to keep away from Lyme. You started with permethrin. And now is the perfect time. Thank you. <laughs> awesome, Brian. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I didn't realize that you had a poem, too. So thank you again. I like for... to write poems, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brian, thank you. Thank you again. You're an awesome person. Thank you again for supporting me on this uh, small podcast that I have. And uh, uh, thank you again. Hopefully we'll meet again. We'll uh, get this done again for tick number two. I should say my, my, my website is called The Tick Terminator. Nice, 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 nice. Thank you. Thank you again, Brian. Thank you. So guys, we spoke with Brian today and we talked about the basics of tick. Could you imagine we talked about tick and we talked about the details of what to do, what not to do. And well, basically not to do, right? But there's one thing that he did say, take care of your health, take care of everything else around you, so then you don't get ticks. So guys, as usual, as always, there is a quarter day from Back to Basics, and hopefully uh, Brian will uh, like that. You do realize that you are a terminate. You are eating through my soul. I mean, that's what the author is saying. So guys, as usual, as always, what do I always say at the end of my episode? Everything in life goes back to basics, and that's what we did today, guys. Guys, take care, God bless, and keep on commenting at all my episodes because it will help me in the future episodes that I have. And remember, I am releasing every day. So there are three things in every episode that is the best, which is the content, the guest, and definitely the host. Guys, take care, God bless, and I will see you next time on Back to Basics. Take care. God bless. Up next week's episode on Back to Basics. Back to kind of the deregulated banking uh, aspect. I'm a big, what I call laissez-faire capitalist. Um, I believe in sort of unregulated uh, uh, markets um, uh, um, for a variety of reasons. But that's what drew me into Bitcoin. I saw the government control of money and banking, um, you know, like in terms of like the regulation and, um, and legislation related to it to be really harmful and really the cause of a lot of historical problems <clears throat> that we face. And I thought cryptocurrency was the answer. I thought back then it was just Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I thought...